drag racing fan between the slicks live here on Thursday night on the Monday morning racer platform. But we also want to welcome the Competition Plus audience on Facebook and the Drag Racing Connection audience on Facebook as well. Well, we're going to be talking about drag racing. Dive into the comment section. Let's talk about drag racing as well, along with each and every one of you tonight and uh, move forward in what is a continuing news cycle and buzz of drag racing. Uh, ch chime in for me. I see that I might be having some technical difficulties on the YouTube side of things. Oh, wow. There's the photo. It finally came in. Wow. So sorry for the black screen to uh, start there. It seems like the internet connection is trying to uh, speed back up and connect back up. Usually don't have those problems, but hey, going live, you know, it happens. It happens. Internet live. Uh, we'll see how that this works out. Uh, sorry that it's in the shape and condition that it's in currently right now, but uh, hopefully it will get better by the time we have our guest come on. The guest tonight is Jade Cook. Now, Jade, she is a regular competitor in Funny Car Chaos competition with her nemesis funny car. Now we will uh, hear from her later on again, this combination, which was a nitrous assisted funny car. In fact, the world's only nitrous assisted funny car that well, anyone in the funny car chaos and funny car world drag racing world knew about, but, the combination has been changed. They have done some testing. You can actually see the combination and some test runs on her uh, Facebook. You can see uh, that, what it is. We're going to be talking about that for sure tonight. And also just her career and her time in drag racing. She's not just a funny car drag racer. She also does some small tire drag racing and comes from a family that loves motorsports. And she does as well. So, Looking forward to talking with Jade later on tonight here on Between the Slicks. Now, last week we got to talk with another young lady, one that took down Tony Stewart at the Nevada Nationals in the top alcohol dragster class in her A-Fuel dragster. The Shields Racing Operation Madison Payne at the wheel won her first national event over Tony Stewart in that Muscle Milk Top Alcohol Dragster, and we got to talk to her about it. It was a good interview, not saying necessarily because of me, but with the information that she gave and the insight of, yeah, there was a desire to beat Tony, to uh, get that first win and do it over Tony and and represent for the drag racers as it were. So if you did not catch that, go back after the show and take the time and watch it. You will you will in enjoy it, I believe. I think it came out as a good episode and a good interview and enlightening on Madison Payne. As uh, far as content, there is new content out on the Monday Morning Racer platform on the YouTube channel. Seagas, Southeast Gasters Association, drag racing from Shadyside Dragway. They're in Shelby, North Carolina. Uh, got this video out last week. You can watch it on the YouTube channel, Monday Morning Racer. It is the final race for 2022, and you can see some of the best action in Southeast Gasters Association drag racing in their last race. Uh, Tim Hall already won the championship coming in to this last event for Southeast Gasters Association. And we've talked with Tim about four or five episodes ago. We talked with Tim Hall and got his perspective on the championship. And if you haven't seen any of the episodes with Tim I highly recommend that you go back and you take and you see those episodes with Tim because 
Tim Hall is an individual that within drag racing, I think almost any drag racer aspires to, to be because he did, ju- he did everything on that car except paint it. And that's not an exaggeration. He built the motor. He builds his own transmission. He built that. He built everything in that car. Just about. The only thing he didn't do was paint it. That is a remarkable story. And he goes out there. He does. He's the current Seagas record holder. He's the current Seagas champion and will be the defending champion in 2023. And did it in almost a flawless fashion. It is like seven out of nine wins with six poles, six number one qualifiers in the season. Just an outstanding performance by Tim Hall. So you definitely need to take the time and hear from him as a drag racer. Uh, Alan Boykin, I'm doing great, man. And you also asked, was that Jay Payne's daughter? Yes, it's Jay Payne's daughter, Shelly Anderson's daughter. So, yes, Madison Payne is the daughter to Jay and Shelly Payne. It was good to have her on the show. That was definitely one that I thoroughly enjoyed. I had been working on it for a while. Tried to get her on right after the win, the win, but things were just crazy for her in school. Remember, she mentioned in even in her she mentioned in her winners interview that hey, I got a midterm. I got I, I got to go focus on it, and then tried to get her around Pomona, and she was busy. So we finally got her on to chat with her about that win, and it was certainly. Uh, good to uh, hear from her. Uh, Drag Racing Central, always good to have you watching along, buddy. And it says, to hear from Jade is going to be awesome. Definitely my favorite of the Funny Car Chaos racers. Uh, Jade is definitely uh, growing in popularity, and rightfully so. Again, a nitrous-assisted Funny Car. Now, we'll talk about it, obviously, in a few moments, around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time when she comes on, that, hey, she has a new combination, and though it's not a new combination to drag racing, it will be the first in Funny Car Chaos competition, and it may be the only of that type of combination in Funny Car racing, period, at least for right now. So it's going to be a good conversation with her. Good to have you watching along. I'm going to say R. Sup to you. Well, guys, thank you for uh, diving there in the comment section and uh, part participating in on the show. I hope that you all can uh, at least hear and see now. I can see on YouTube, but I do have some current internet connection, so I hope things aren't too choppy on your end. Just stay tuned. Maybe things will uh, get where they usually are when it comes to the internet and uh, we'll have a fine show we'll take a quick break and we will come back and continue with between the slicks here on monday morning racer power built tools exemplifies innovation in the tool industry from hand tools power tools and even tool storage check out powerbuilt.com for power built tools And remember, use promo code MMR15 for 15% off at purchase. Well, we'll go ahead and take the time and dive into drag news. And as before I go into drag news here on Between the Slicks and just have a highlight of what's out there in the drag racing world, which does not mean everything. It's not an exhaustive time period of drag racing news. A lot of news was dropped for drag racing overall, not just NHRA, not just World Series of Pro Mod, a lot of news was dropped this week. So put in the comment section, what news excited you the most so far that you have seen this week up to Thursday night and the airing of Between the Slicks? I would love to hear from you on what you thought was the biggest news drop of the week and why. Or 
the most interesting news drop of the week for you. Maybe it's not necessarily the biggest, but that that one was like, wow, was not expecting that. That one came out of left field. And uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know. And hope you're enjoying a good drink tonight. And uh, let's enjoy talking about drag racing. Speaking of drag racing, good to have you along talking about it, Sam. And Mike Buchanan, uh, the uh, hombre, says, hey, buddy, uh, funny car chaos competitor. And uh, looking forward to seeing his new body mounted on his funny car. He has a beautiful uh, body that was on it, but got another body and going to get it decked out and ready to go and make that car a little lighter. And maybe we'll see him crack into a B field. That would be stellar. Not sure what Mike's shooting for. We uh, probably going to learn at the classic, though, uh, coming up at uh, the end of March. Funny Car Chaos Classic at the Texas Motorplex. Thank you, Dennis, for watching. Uh, Michael Neal. Now, we had Michael on Chaos Live last night. Had a great conversation with Michael and Ricky over their uh, funny car that will be coming out to Funny Car Chaos at the Classic. And they're on in Funny Car Chaos competition. Says Jade Cook and team are always impressive. Very excited to see that. Oh, let's, oh, oh, let's not say that quite yet. Let's not say that quite yet. But yes, Pro Charger combo in 2023. We're going to get the download from Jade uh, when she gets on. And yes, many of you, I'll bring the comments up in a few moments, already talking about the Tim Wilkerson announcement. And it is one, I just got to say, the Skag colors with the Tiger Stripe on a funny car looks dang good. It just looks really good. And I am excited for Tim Wilkerson that this announcement was made. He kind of he made comments that you can read on read in an article on competitionplus.com that he was running scared that there would be parts challenges or using old cylinder heads, things of that nature. And he's always had a great operation and an operation that can jump up and win races and bite the biggest names in the sport, but didn't quite have the support to run at the top level week in and week out, maybe hurt some parts, lean on some parts. That was not Tim's operation. It was not his mode of operation. But with this, we very well may see Tim uh, step up, uh, lean it out proverbially, if you will, and see him that much more competitive in NHRA drag racing in the funny car eliminator category. I think the car looks good. This is a great partnership. The Maynard family is coming in and making a big impact in NHRA drag racing. Obviously, we have Tony Schumacher, now with Tim Wilkerson. And by the way, this is the announcement that I have alluded to that was supposed to be made at PRI. It was on the board, like Wilkerson Maynard family, and it was taken off the board. So they had to work some things out, get some things pinned and, and smoothed out, but we finally got it. It took a while, but this one was expected, and it is certainly good to see. We'll go to the comment section in just a few moments and bring up your comments on this announcement. I do Love, though, how people have already been playing with Tim being a SCAG partner and congratulating him, yet having a little bit of fun with it. It was a couple of days ago that Ron Caps Motorsports and whoever runs the Ron Caps Motorsports social media, they might even got this idea from Ron because Ron is active with his own social media, Ron Caps on Twitter and Ron Caps on Facebook. They made this post, and I died. I love it. And they mentioned Timmy the Tiger. They're great. And because of, the, in, because of his skag uniform, the tiger stripes, and putting Tim's face on a Frosted Flakes box. Yes, that is perfect. I love 
what they did. Whoever runs Ron Caps Motorsports should get an award just for this post alone. Awesome. Stellar post. I loved it. Died laughing and certainly shared it out there in social media. Drag Racing Central says the Wilkerson Maynard deal was awesome. Plus, Caps team making the memes about them is a plus. Yes, I know, man. It was great to see. I love it. And we, we need that in drag racing. We need that amongst the sport. I agree, as you just commented, uh, Drag Racing Central, more NHRA teams need to make memes. We just need more memes in general around drag racing, no matter what the level is. And we're going to talk about a meme with Jade. She got a lot of attention with a meme she did uh, many, many months ago uh, with her old combination. And it was funny, the reactions. And I want to talk to her about that meme. But look, we communicate in day, in, in our time, in this day and time, we communicate through the sh through memes and memes don't always explain the whole situation. Oftentimes they simplify major subjects too much. They they simplify them too much. But in a setting like what Ron Caps Motorsports did with the Tim Wilkerson Tim Wilkerson announcement, it's perfect. It is humorous, it's lighthearted, it's still congratulatory, it still gets uh, marketing out there. I mean, heck, Frosted Flakes might notice and get in the game, and you never know. But it creates a buzz, especially during the offseason. That's what they need. It was a good post, and I, I agree. We need more memes out there. They don't always have to be double O blank show level, though, though, those, though that page at times can put out some funny ones. More memes would certainly uh, be good. More memes. That's just how we communicate. And they're easily shared. They are funny. People like to laugh. It just makes sense. Alan mentions, watched West Buck show and he had Tricky Ricky on and he's running Another year and running the World Series of Pro Mod. That's my exciting news for the week. Yes. Now, Ricky announced that many, many weeks ago that he was running. He's going to be running PDRA uh, with his operation and running the World Series of Pro Mod. Uh, he's even got a match race between him and Scott Palmer down there, I believe, in qualifying. Uh, but, yeah, it's good that Ricky is going to be out there. As uh, far as I know, no plans to run NHRA. It's just PDRA unless something else was say, stated on the West Buck show. It's good that he's going to be out there. And just never trust Ricky Smith saying he's going to retire. I just, you can't believe it. You just, you just can't believe it. I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon, him driving. And even if he does retire from driving, that doesn't mean he's going to be out of the sport. He's going to be there. He's going to be there tuning. He's going to be there consulting. Uh, I don't think he'll ever get away from the sport. And there's nothing wrong with that. Good to have Tricky Ricky around for sure. Uh, continuing in drag news, we just mentioned the SCAG announcement. And with mentioning the World Series of Pro Mod, I love that this class was added. Drag Illustrated announced that factory stock will be on the card at the World Series of Pro Mod. Uh, they are going, they're going to be racing for $25,000 and excuse me excuse me uh, the money amount I'm not, I'm not sure on i'm looking at the press release now and i don't see a, a money amount it just mentioned the money amount for some other classes but i'm sure some big money is going to be on the line love factory stock it is a great car platform love the drag racing that they put on and, man, the World Series of Pro Mod continues to shape up to be like World Door Slammer Nationals 3.0. They're going to have everything there, and I love it. Factory stock, extreme front-wheel drive, Pro Mod, Mountain Motor Pro stock. Before long, we'll have an announcement on 500 cubic inch showing up and running down there and being a part of the festivities. So, World Series of Pro Mod going to be a big time for sure. And so glad that Factory Stock got the nod 
to be there. Uh, oh, here's, here's an interesting question. What's factory stock versus X? So I assume you're saying what's factory stock versus uh, factory X? And what is uh, coming coming up for the NHRA uh, at that level? So factory stock, they have, how can I put it? They are not tube chassis, okay? Factory stock, they are not tube chassis. You're talking about something that is a, how can I put it? I don't know. I don't think normal chassis makes sense because they do have a cage. Okay. They do have a cage, but they're just a regular stock chassis. Now, sure, a modification has been made for them to go drag racing, but you get them from the factory. And sadly, some of these guys, you know, it's become very expensive. Uh, some of these guys are actually taking the car from the factory, completely stripping them down, making modifications and putting them back together to go factory stock racing. Granted, the they are not pure race cars. It's the best way I can put it. They have a cage in them. They still have like the factory dash in them. They still have like factory seats in them. There's still interior in them and things of, of that nature. All right. Now you go over to factory stock, excuse me, not factory stock, factory X. What they're going to be is a tube chassis car with stock panels on it, if you will. And they will have to be manually shifted. They'll have five, five speeds, but they'll be manually shifted. Many of them are going to be running the combinations that are in factory stock. So it's honestly what factory X will be is a melding of, I think, pro stock at its heyday of popularity, if you will, and factory stock. I think it's 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 going to find the the middle the between of pro stock and factory stock. Didn't know that there was a middle, but there is a middle and they're going to find it and it's going to be uh, fascinating that that is uh, the case. So uh, I'm sure in years to come we see an event like World Series of Pro Mod that you will find that Factory X will probably be a part of it. But them being so new, yeah, they're not going to be there. I mean, the first time that we're going to see Factory X at the track is Charlotte this year, and it will be in a exhibition status. Then they will be at Bristol, another exhibition status, and then they go into a season, a points-earning season, throughout the rest of the NHRA schedule at various races. You can go to NHRA.com and that schedule is out there. I'm looking forward to seeing Factory X in person. Uh, Waterbug85, are factory stocks street legal? I think you can make them street legal. I mean, they have slicks on. You have to change the tires out, for example. Uh, but they have operating lights and there's a blinker and things of that nature. I, You could probably get your factory stock ride registered to uh, do some drag and drive. You probably could, I imagine. And you bring up an interesting point, like what is a street car? Like you got Tom Bailey out there with a pro mod that is street legal. Is it a street car? Hey, it's got blinkers. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Alan chimes in and says, how can we get the Gasters to have a race at Galat Motorsports Park? I believe you're referring to the Southeast Gasters Association. Well, that just comes down to scheduling. It comes down to uh, deals being made. It would be Galat, you know, reaching out to Queen Stott and others and getting them uh, to come. Now, as I've had Quain on many times and many other competitors of the Southeast Gasters Association, uh, Quain doesn't like to uh, double dip in markets with that already have a nostalgia program or have one nearby. So there may be a situation like that. And also, you've got to remember, they race in North Carolina three times. You've got Farmington, and they race two times at Shadyside. So the North Carolina re representation is well for the Southeast Gasters Association. Granted, they're not to that side of North Carolina, 
if you're near Galat Motorsports Park, probably the closest place to see a Southeast Gas Association race for you will be Orangeburg, South Carolina. Again, right offhand, I don't know if Orangeburg is closer to that Raleigh-Durham area than, than the Charlotte-Shelby area, but Orangeburg might be the best bet. But it's just scheduling. It just works out of does it make sense for everyone. And Quain's often said they like going to smaller tracks. They like going to the tracks that have an old school feel. And Galat is a premier facility. They have a spectacular facility. And it would be good to see. It'd be cool to see Southeast Gas Association drag racing there at Galat. You never know. It might happen one day. Let me continue in drag racing news with what is happening out there in the world of drag racing. Again, factory stock, it's been announced. They're going to be a part of the World Series of Pro Mod. Uh, the Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod Association, their schedule is out. You can see it on the screen in front of you. They kind of do some back and forth to several key venues in the Northeast, but they are looking at several races this year. In 2023, they'll kick it off at Maryland International Raceway, move on to Maple Grove. Then they'll be at Cecil County Dragway in Maryland again, Empire Dragway just south of Rochester, New York, back to Cecil County in Maryland, back then to Empire Dragway in New York. They will also be competing at the Yellow Bullet Nationals at Cecil County and back closing out their season at Maryland International Raceway. So they got a lot of races in Maryland and Pennsylvania and New York for the Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod Association in 2023. Uh, did see that Doug Core mentioned this announcement. Good news for Buddy Hull signing Mike. Is it Googer? Is that how you say his last name? I haven't heard it in a while, and I, I'm, I imagine I'm butchering it, but a veteran crew chief that has been out there and got the job done for many before. He is going to be added to the stable at Buddy Hole Racing. I think that's good news for Buddy that when he does show up and he does compete, there is someone there focused and uh, at that camp calling some shots. And we're going to eventually have Buddy – and Mike on, we're going to chat with them both and see how this came about. Matter of fact, was texting with Buddy Hole earlier today, and he was like, hey, would love to come on Between the Slicks and talk about it. So we may very well have them next week or the one after. Uh, did have an individual lined up before Jade, and that didn't work out. When we got Jade, always good to talk to my Funny Car Chaos peeps and uh, get the download from them, especially with what Jade is been doing in the off season and Doug you also asked yes okay Doug uh, Lee are you going to be at the funny car chaos races uh you know Chris Graves is a wild man and uh wildly enough he said yes come back for 2023 so I will be at the chaos races looking forward to that funny car chaos and nitro chaos in 2023 Waterbug says, bummer, I missed Payne live on MMR. Was that last week? Yes, it was last week, but you can you can go back and watch it. You can go back and watch it, and you might have already gone back and watched it. Uh, but if any of you missed that, you can see last week's episode with Madison Payne. Really enjoyed uh, that episode, and I guess you've done pretty good when – an article on Competition Plus pops up, and a lot of the quotes in the article are from your podcast, and your podcast is mentioned in the CompetitionPlus.com article. And it was good to talk with Madison. I really feel like it's so – the people who compete in Top Alcohol Dragster and Top Alcohol Funny Car don't get enough love. They just don't. Whether that is Sean Bellamere, whether it's Gordon, uh, Julie Natus, Salinas, Madison Payne, so many others. Okay? So many others. They just don't get enough representation. 
And I even consider reaching out this week to another A fuel driver, and we're going to have to get her on soon. Uh, Megan Hart, Megan uh, Hartman. We're going to have to get her on. Chatted with them at PRI. Uh, the daughter of uh, of um, Rhonda Hartman and uh, Bodie, uh, Bodie Smith, uh, John. We're going to have to get them on uh, and ch- chat with them. Again, I just I don't think the A fuel guys, the alcohol guys in NHRA get enough representation. They don't get enough love. And I was surprised that when Madison won that race, that we didn't see her like having a little media blurt and tour. I'm and maybe I didn't catch it. Maybe she was on an NHRA podcast. Maybe she was elsewhere, but I feel like there weren't that many places that, hey, pick up the phone and let's talk to this girl who has a great drag racing pedigree and beat Tony Stewart of all people in the final round at the Nevada Nationals. And I felt that it was she earned it. It was due for some platform somewhere, even as small and rinky-dink as mine, to say, hey, what about the win? Talk to us about it. So I was glad to have her on. Well, guys, we're very uh, going to take a few more comments, and then we're going to switch and get Jade Cook on. She's in the uh, green room awaiting to be live on Between the Slicks. Alan says, Finnegan got his gasser on the streets. Yes, blasphemy it. It is on the street as long as when that Hemi is running. And it wasn't at Worldwide Technology Raceway when I came out of the media room and they were attempting to swap from a Gremlin one Hemi to put it in the blasphemy and uh, rough drag week for Finnegan. But yes, they do have it as a drag and drive competing machine. Uh, Stacy Welch. Uh, Any news on if Tommy Johnson will be in a car this year? No news. I have not heard anything about Tommy Johnson being in a car. Uh, The only news that I know, and it it would be like standing news concerning Tommy Johnson, is he is helping out uh, his wife with the business they have. They do handmade candles and cutting boards. Uh, Check that out. Like if you want a really nice crafted cutting board, you can get it from Tommy Johnson Jr. and candles too. And also the parts business that uh, they have. But nope, no, no news on Tommy Johnson uh, Jr. at all. All right, guys, let's take a break and get Miss Cook on for her first appearance on Between the Slicks right here on the Monday Morning Racer platform. If you own a beautiful modern muscle car like this 1320 Challenger, I'm sure you don't want it stolen. Because the Challenger and many other modern vehicles have an easily accessible neutral release strap. That was your coin holder in your central console and beneath that there's this red cord that someone can pop, put it in the neutral and potentially easily steal your car. But at Destroyer1320.com, they have the TDS theft deterrent system, which is a cover over that strap using factory mounting points so that you don't get popped by a thief. So make sure to go to Destroyer1320.com using promo code MMR for 15% off and get your theft deterrent system TDS and steal the thieves' hope. All right, Jade Cook, welcome to Between the Slicks. Thank you for having me. Man, it's good to have you on the show, and thank you for working it out on such short notice as well. I appreciate that. The most challenging thing about doing live shows is booking people. Most challenging thing. Most Mm. challenging thing. And it also is refreshing that uh, from the time that you did your first live show to, like, asking now – it's a completely different idea on it. Like the first time you look like a, a cat on a hot tin roof and it seems like you've, you've eased into it a little bit and you're, you're, you're handling it a lot better. Yeah. The nerves are still there, but I'm starting to get a little more comfy. I remember the first time you came at me with a camera and I ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember going over the first time for an interview. You're like, we're, we're doing that now in footy car chaos. Oh like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's let's 
let's begin. Let's get everybody up to speed who may not know who Jade Cook is. I know we got a lot of folks watching that do know who you are. They are fans of Funny Car Chaos, but we got plenty watching that may not know who you are. So, drag racing. How did you get into it? And I imagine, from what I know about the family, you didn't have much choice but to not be in it. Oh, we have a choice for sure, but I um, I love it. So really, there is no choice for me. Um, obviously, my dad got me into it. He's been doing it forever, literally forever. And um, I started when I was eight. I got the bug early. I wanted a junior dragster. And so he put me in one. And the time that we had... We would go out, we'd go to the track, and it was just, it was a good time to spend together. And we moved from the junior to a couple of door cars. I drove a couple for short periods of time, and then we ended up with the vet. And the vet has been my baby for many years now. She's my small tire 80 Corvette. And um, we still run her. She is kind of on the back burner from the funny car thing. <laughs> Um, we started the funny car stuff in 21 and we had a great season and it is, um, it's addicting what Chris Graves has put together. It's a great program and I don't know what I would do without it. It takes up a lot of my time. <laughs> All right. So the vet, let's break that down. I know we're going to mainly talk about the funny car tonight, but the vet was certainly a stepping tone, stepping stone to the idea of, hey, let's have a funny car. Let's go funny car racing. Let's do it in funny car chaos. You talk about small tire. You talk about this. What do you mean by small tire? What do you what's in the car as a combination? Where do you race it? How often do you race it? All of that. OK, it's kind of our um, backup plan. It's our, you know, when we don't have a chaos race to go to and there happens to be a small tire race or some, you know, something put on that my car fits in. We usually take the vet out because we just can't stay away from the track. Um, the vet uh, lately we've been running on small tire. I started on a big tire and we kind of worked our way down. So, you know, 20, 28, 5, 28. Uh, depends on what the race requires. And we run oh, random races here and there. We run at Hinton. I know Big Mark has some races at Noble that we've run at. And um, it's it's a nitrous setup like the funny car used to be. We'll get there. But it's just a big block Chevy with the one stage of nitrous on it. And it goes. It got it taught me it taught me how to do what I do now. It goes. That's all that matters. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And all right. W what about the transition to funny car racing? What because I'll say this, it seems like most people who drive a funny car, like they woke up one day and they said funny car. And that's that's just what all they wanted to do. Like you, you talk to a lot of drivers. They're like, I saw a funny car when I was a kid, and I've never wanted to drive anything else. And that's what they go do. They go drive a funny car, and it seems like that's all they do. They drive funny cars. So you're doing the door car thing. How did this interest come about about the funny cars and funny car chaos and getting involved? Well, I've always been a fan of John Force. I've never been shy of the funny cars you know i i wasn't a bug for me like it was for most people it seems like that are into funny cars they were like it has to be a funny car for me it was like i'll drive anything put me in a go-kart or whatever like i just have fun doing what i do whether it's the funny car or the vet or literally anything put me in anything i will drive it and i love it it is a very different um going back and forth from the two they're not it you you think you just you think it would be like, you know, it's drag racing. It's the same thing. It's not. It's completely two different animals getting in them. And they're, it's fun. We we raced the vet. And I think that was kind of part of the issue was finding races that we could compete in and, you know, follow. And then we heard about Funny Car Chaos. And we were like, we could just throw what's in the vet in the funny car. And that's basically what we did. That's kind of why we started on Nitrous. And we just wanted a series that we could follow and like compete in and be competitive. And that's what funny car chaos gave us. 
oftentimes people say about Funny Car Chaos that exact thing. They were searching for somewhere to be competitive and searching for a series. Oh, we have another a new guest. Yeah, he was laying in my lap and he just stood up. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to have the pup along as well. Yeah, always. What is it for a racer that makes competing in a series something that's desired? That's something, you know, Chris Graves has hit on. It's not just a bunch of match racing. It's not just a race here or there. You're earning points. You might get a big paycheck. You can get something out of. You're even getting an exposure through live shows on that platform and beyond now. Why is that something desired for the racer? Oh, for me, I really like that how organized it is and that it gives us some structure and something to follow and something to anticipate and look forward to. Cause with the, a lot of the schedules that I've seen, they're kind of like hit or miss. Like, are we going to, there's nothing to follow through the whole season. It's just like one race. And then this just, it makes it so much more like, Oh, I don't even know how to explain it. <sighs> It's just a good series like to have and it's good to have the structure and the organization that he has and just it's you get you get the people I think when you have a series you get the people to compete and they want the points and then there you see the same people there and those people just kind of become a family and I think that's what I think that's what everybody's looking for when they're looking for a series. I I agree I because for me even on the media side it's the same feeling. I wanted to be a part of a series if mm. possible and cover it because you have like your group, you yeah. all are my guys and it's, it's a fun group, a family group, but like, it's, it's mine. Like it, I've, you know, I've gotten to know many of you all and gone across the country and, you know, the stories and laughing and joking and tough times and good times. And, you don't get that just showing up randomly somewhere when, running yeah. your car. You Whenever just there's, it just, it's just great how much I feel like I, I feel like these guys are my family, these funny car guys. And it's great to see the same guys out every, you know, every race. And there's just the consistency of it. It's just so much better than, you know, sparse races that you don't know who's going to be at. And it's just not as close knit as, as this series. Well, Dragon Drive, he comments, says, great show tonight. Yes, certainly. Good to have Jade on. Thank you for the $4.99 Super Chat Dragon, J Dragon Drive. Guys, go follow him. He is the source for all the drag and drive news that you need. Hey, speaking of Dragon Drive, you got a small tire car. I mean, could Dragon Drive be in the future for Cook Racing, or have y'all done that already? Oh, my goodness. This is a conversation that is very often brought up in my family it's definitely been a thought we actually have a car that would be um a lot better candidate for that than the vet the vet's pretty much it's a, it's a drag car but we have a um earlier model silver mustang that my dad's drove a couple times and i drove a couple times before i got into the vet and it was slash is street legal could be very easily. <laughs> and that's kind of the car that we always look at and we're like, drag and drive? Like, do we want to do that? And it's kind of a teeter totter. Do we want to do it? Do we not? It's going to be a lot, but it would be another series. And then, then we do that or chaos. Cause you know, that would conflict. And it's just, it's a constant debate in my house, whether or not that's going to happen. I'll say from the media side, a lot of fun, which I wasn't turning wrenches. I wasn't, you know, staying up late at night trying to get the next Well, no, I was staying up late at night. I'll tell you about it. I, I, I did have to do that, actually. But I wasn't working on the cars. I had other work to do. But it is so much fun. And it is such a – you talk about family. Like, it in a whole week, you know, at least what I experienced from Hot Rod, uh, the, the drag week, Hot Rod mm -hmm. drag week is – I mean, you get that all in one week in some of the most challenging circumstances, yet in also some of the most fun circumstances, all colliding and coming together. And what an interesting group of people all helping each other to get to the next 
place to do racing. So yeah, y'all need to put it on the list. Y'all y'all need to y'all need to get some it dragon might just drive have in. To be one of those things that Dad crosses off his bucket list. There you but, go. You know, we'll see. <laughs> There you go. Well, I know uh, Mr. Michael Narks with Dragon Drive. He's got one that uh, happens at Mocan. So maybe, you know, I know Mocan's up the road a little ways, but it could possibly. You never know. Never know. So never know. Dragon it's Drive in the future. I still want someone. And I think Funny Car Chaos needs to figure out a way to like to sponsor it. There needs to be a street legal funny car to do a Dragon Drive. I mean, okay. if anybody was going to do it, it'd probably be us. <laughs> Why not? Do it. I know. Why not? Why not? Be, look, you, you had the only nitrous assisted funny car out there okay. in the world. And we'll talk about it in a few moments, but you might again have the first and the only of what you've got underneath the body now. Might as well go ahead and do a drag and drive funny car, too. Why not? Might as well. Might as well. Speaking of the funny car, let's get the breakdown on well, what the heck this thing is. So Year and make of the body. Where did you get the chassis from? And here it is with the nitrous combination. The lowdown on what was. What was? Oh, I don't even know for sure what the body is supposed to be. When we got it, it had Mustang stickers on it. And that just wasn't um, in our blood. We're not really Ford people. So we took the headlights off of it. We are going to put some new headlights on it this year. She might have a little bit of a facelift and some other additions uh, to her looks this season as well. But uh, she was just a big block Chevy with, she had two kits of nitrous on. We didn't really get to play with the second one as much as we wanted to. Um, just a funny car. We got her down in Texas. I can't remember exactly where, and that's what she is or was it looking at it i feel like like buick or osmobile i, feel oh, like I think that's, that's what it was i think it was an oldsmobile i think that's what it's supposed to be but they put mustang stickers if um there's still tail lights on it but we're gonna we're gonna dress her up a little bit for this season so she'll be looking a little different okay okay hey every every girl needs a makeup kit and nemesis yeah. has got got hers for sure. Well, why Nemesis? Why why that? Oh, I really wanted to name her after a Greek goddess. And so I went through and I looked and I looked and I looked up meanings behind one. And I found one that was a Greek goddess of chaos, but that I didn't really like her name. It didn't really fit. And then I found Ramanusa and her nickname Nemesis. And I was like, that clicked. It just clicked. I was like, I want it to be Nemesis. Well, you certainly hope that you are a nemesis out there for the uh, competitors with that hot rod. And look, first season out, finished really well. And this last year, though, I feel like it was a almost night and day type of situation from first one to second one. Uh, sophomore slump. I know not everyone. I know nobody likes to talk about it, but it does seem to be a real thing in life and in sports. And it seemed like you all went through that. So bring everyone up to speed what 2021 was like. And then the trials and tribulations of 2022. So 2021 could not have been better. We, straight out of the get-go, we were like, we'll be lucky to qualify in some of these races. We weren't really expecting a whole lot from that season. We were just wanting to have fun and follow the series. And then I started winning races. And we were like, is this happening? And we just kept like, we, what did we run her up twice and won two races out of the maybe six or seven that we went to. And I think my whole team was just flabbergasted, but um, beginner's luck, I guess, because rolling into 22, all we did was fight that car. And we fought every single aspect on that car that we could, we would go up to the line, do a burnout or stage, and then something would go wrong. It seemed like once every race, something would bite us and kick our butt and then we'd fight it and or we'd lose the round because of it. And it was a tough season, but we made it through and I think we're feeling pretty optimistic about the upcoming season. 
I certainly believe your optimism is right to have, especially from what testing you all have done with the new combination. And we're going to talk about it. We're not quite there yet. Okay. We're not quite there yet. I know everybody wants to hear, get the down low. They might have seen some of the footage that you've got on your Facebook channel. By the way, folks, you can follow Jade, Jade Cook Racing, Instagram, Facebook. You can follow her. I want to talk about this meme. I loved this meme. Uh, when this trend was floating around in the world of, well, the world, uh, we, and by the way, folks, we did just lose Jade. We'll see if she can jump back in in just a few moments. I'll explain the meme while we have the chance, though. So this means floating around and everybody is taking the opportunity and they are juxtaposing the normal with the outlandish, if you will. And Jade uh, took the meme that everybody had been using and like, hey, let's use it for our application on the race page, and in particular, Nitrous Funny Car. Well, the normal, what? Blown funny cars. Like, what funny car doesn't, doesn't have a supercharger on it? And Jade's out there with the only, as far as we know, Nitrous assisted funny car. And what was funny about this particular post and this this meme is how many times people chimed in and stated and asked, don't you mean nitro funny car? And with Jade Cook, the only one in the world that it could mean nitrous funny cars, no. Exactly right. The juxtaposition from blown funny cars to nitrous funny cars. I think that's a accurate representation as well of the situation that Jade was in with her nitrous assisted funny car. So at the moment, we don't have Jade in. Jade uh, had some technical difficulties and just dropped right out. We'll see uh, what happens with that. We're going to give her just a little bit more time. Still a lot more to talk about with her. I'm going to take a quick break. We'll see if Jade is able to get back in. And hopefully it's while the break is going on. Hero Soap Company is a veteran-owned establishment that produces all-natural essential oils-infused soap that is sold with a portion of the proceeds supporting other veteran groups. Hero Soap Company. Heroes supporting heroes. Be a hero yourself and buy a bar and let freedom clean. Did, did a battery die? I don't know what happened. It just completely turned off and then restarted. So, <laughs> hey, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> hey, going live. I tell you what, I love doing live shows. There's just something different to them than something that's canned and you put together later. But you never know what is going to happen. So I'm going to bring it back up. I gave the lowdown on this meme and you walk us through behind the scenes of people's reaction. Cause I thought it was funny how everybody's like, don't you mean nitro? And it's like, no, oh this, my is, gosh. This, this, this is Jade cook. She can <laughs> say nitrous funny car. Literally so many people commented on that and were like, you misspelled nitro. And I was like, Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Yes, this this was a funny one. This was a funny one. Who did did you come up with this or how how did this come about? I love this post. I can't remember if I came up with that or my dad did. I think my dad sent me that meme with like the original stuff on it and was like, "You need to make this but nitrous." And I was like, "Hold on. I got this." No, it was definitely good. And look, it is something that for even all the Funny Car Chaos competitors, uh, find a way to create a buzz and create a little bit more footprint out there in social media and create the the aura around uh, personality and team. Because, like, you've got this bright yellow Funny Car with Nemesis on the side. Was a nitrous Funny Car. I mean, that's unique. That's different. And that's something definitely to play up. And there's many other stories like that in Funny Car Chaos.
Did you get that? I'm a, I know we got we got a lag there. It, it got a little bit of lag okay. towards the okay. end. Okay, cool. No worries. No worries. We'll work through this. <laughs> so let's take let's go ahead and take the time and break down what you're going to be working with in 2023. Y'all were smart began making some posts just like this one of a new combination can't see it and you know what's happening a lot of people chimed in like oh more 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 nitrous you know, more nitrous right a bigger motor or uh but before um, before we clue everyone in on what the combination is what was the wildest comment in your mind did someone like happen to comment like turbine or anything <laughs> no somebody said efi and i was like you obviously don't know my father <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty much the probably the wildest we got a lot of like oh nitro or nitro injected with nitrous and the blower which obviously whatever you know close enough and um just a lot of stuff somebody posted on that specific photo and was like, hopefully some new headlights or something like that. And I was like, yeah, she's still naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, the headlights are coming. We've learned that. So the yeah. headlights are coming. And uh, there's at least right now, one photo of that new combination. This one right here. Yes. And that is a centrifugal supercharger. That sure is. So what brand? Uh, where'd you get it? How has it gone so far? And in testing, I believe I've saw the lowest ET was four, uh, 416. That's at least the lowest I have heard of. Uh, mm -hmm. Where does that stand on Jade Cook's personal best in the funny car? So it's a supercharger. It's uh, The brand is centrifugal. Oh, gosh, this word just really gets me. Centrifugal specialties. And um, it's still. So just wait, wait. We cannot say pro charger. It is not nope. a pro charger. We like, had lots folks. of comments saying pro charger, yeah, and folks. I wanted to comment back on every single one and be like, "Not pro charger, not pro charger." Yeah. It's 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 close, but that's not what it is. Right. It's a typical specialties. Right, ladies and gentlemen, for, for all of you out there in drag racing, the pro charger is a brand. It is a centrifugal supercharger, but it's a brand. The centrifugal supercharger has been around for a long time. Like, so long they were in World War II airplanes, okay? So, let's get the name right. Centrifugal specialties. Okay. Specialties, yes, sir. Um, it's still a big block Chevy. Other than that, it's pretty simple. Just like our nitro setup, there's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. Um, we just kind of wanted to see what would happen if we put it together. And we started testing and we realized that good things happened. Um, we ran a 416 and that was by a long shot, my fastest pass yet. And it felt good, everything, the pass was great. Everything felt great. We, um, we're really optimistic, hoping that we could get some more lower numbers put on the board, hopefully here pretty soon. I'm surprised no one has already just commented in this comment section of why. Why the move from nitrous? Why? I think, well, in part, cost, but also... There's so many, there's so much room for error with nitrous. Um, there were so many things that went wrong our last season that were, they were, they were operator error and or crew error and or just little things that if, if the, this button doesn't get hit and this valve doesn't get turned and this and that, and it cost us more races than we wanted to. And we wanted just something that we could just hook up to a battery charger and then sit back like, that's kind of what we're hoping to do with this setup is just um, not as much of the finicky stuff. So less room for error. So less room for failure or loss. You know, I, I love the mystique around nitrous following the early days of pro mod and, 
and some of the big names in pro mod being nitrous competitors. But it is a challenging combination to to get right, and it is a lot of work. And you hear a lot of the pro mod racers moving to a centrifugal supercharger because there is less maintenance and because they're user friendly, if you will, at least in the racing world, they're more user friendly than many of the others. So I could see why you want to make that switch. I also feel, is there some sense with, you know, cracking off a 416, which would have got you like high C field, if not even low B field at the last race for the finals that, Hey, if we go with this combination, we're going to give ourselves a more solid chance to make every single show. Yes, absolutely. I think that we're hoping to run a lot more consistent, lower numbers with this setup. And hopefully that gets us, you know, maybe a little bit higher in the fields or lower, you know, ranked better in the fields uh, when it comes to qualifying and, and just the consistency I'm hoping is going to be there for the rounds. I'm curious, did you happen to have any moments in testing where, so like my little Kia Soul with its little hamster motor of a 1.6 liter, I have a manual transmission, a little five speed, you know, I'm shifting gears, you know, trying to make it up a hill, barely can, but I get in a, a automatic car and I'm like trying to hit the imaginary clutch and it's not there. I'm curious. So like, did you have moments in testing where you're like trying to, you know, like, Oh, th this is what I do as a nitrate, like, but that's not there now. No more. Don't, don't need to do it. I did feel very, um, like it wasn't doing anything like that. We were testing and I would, you know, normally I back up, I open the bottle and I purge. I, I, I would back up for my burnout and I just kind of sit there and go, oh yeah, I don't have to do anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I guess I'll just go towards the light now. Like I just, there was a moment <laughs> that I was like, nope, no, I don't have to do all of that. I guess I'll just go towards the light now. <laughs> and then there was also times that we were in between making passes and I was, you know, I'm used to having this mentality of like, we have to do this, 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 we got to rotate the bottles out. We got to change all the plugs. We got to put it on the charger and fuel it. And get it. we were just like, yeah, <laughs> we just, we didn't have to do all of that. I didn't have to take the bottle out and change the, one in the heater for a different one and it just seems like there's a lot less going on and I had, had to kind of take a moment and go I guess I can relax I'm just not used to relaxing well, well I mean there you go already in testing seeing some of the dividends of the uh, switch and I'm sure that will make chaos racing that much easier and also enjoyable because Absolutely. look when you when you go to the racetrack you no one wants to have a bad day. And when you have those little gremlins, they make for a rough day. Like I remember at the Chaos Cajun Nationals, you all look so dejected with that rear end issue and not being able to compete whatsoever on race day itself. I definitely have a very competitive crew. It's almost hard for me because I try to stay very optimistic and like, oh, well, guys, like, even though we didn't win or we don't get to run, like, at least we got to all hang out and, like, have a good time. And they're just like this. <laughs> the whole time, all of them, they're so competitive. And they just they just want to see me do great things. And I love them all. I, don't, I couldn't do it without them. But, yeah, they definitely um, get a little bent out of shape when we don't, we don't get to do what we're supposed to. So it, it is hard on everyone for you know when especially when it's not anything that you can fix because i'm telling you we were thinking about welding it up right there and like trying to run it but and they would do it they would do it for me and they would help me do it and we just we just decided to watch a couple rounds and then we went to new orleans that's that's not a bad way to turn it around it's not a bad everybody way felt better after we went to new orleans i bet so i bet so for sure uh, Speaking of the crew, family, obviously, uh, give us the lowdown. Who participates with Jade Cook Racing at a funny car 
chaos event. I believe you've got a brother involved. Your dad's obviously involved. You've mm-hmm. got, uh, uh, I, I don't know what the correct term, whether fiance or boyfriend, whichever one is involved. And you, you, uh, I believe your sister's involved. It's just like everyone's involved. It is chaos is more than just going racing. It's a family outing. It is a family outing for us. Um, so obviously I'm going to start with my crew chief, my dad, my tuner, my, everything my best friend um he none of this would be possible without him absolutely not possible um we're gonna move to josh who is my boyfriend he helps around the pit a ton and keeps everybody entertained (laughs) Uh, my sister my backup girl she recently started coming around this season um we had a race near her and she came to it just because she was like oh it's close i'll come i guess she got the bug and she's been to almost every race ever since and she started backing me up and helping out and she pitches in where she can and she jumps in and helps out and she's great to have around um obviously chance my stepbrother is um in another car so he kind of has his own thing going on but also he's there you know for some muscle if we need it or you know, it's just good to have them there, you know, as a big family. I always call my uh, my stepmom, Kim, I always call her my photographer slash videographer. She's always there. She takes the best videos. All of the videos that you see on my Facebook of the car going down the track, 99% of them are going to be taken by her. She does a great job and she's there for moral support and she helps where she can and love her to death. Big family outing. And, you know, your stepbrother's been doing pretty good in his uh, funny car ride uh, for not that many times out. It's he's, he's done well. Yeah, he's done well. He might have a little bit of that beginner's luck that I had in 21 because he, he did. He made it to the finals at, I want to say, the last race of the mm-hmm. year, yes. the season finale. And sadly, he read lit. He does be getting a little close on that light sometime. And... So he red lit in the final. It would have been great to see him, you know, take home a trophy, his first or, you know, a winner's trophy. He got a little runner up trophy, but um, it would have been great to have him win a race at his first year out. Uh, He hasn't been to obviously nearly as many of them as I have. And, you know, it's it's got to come eventually. But he was close and he actually knocked me out that race because I was just taking a nap on the starting line, which is very not typical of me I we kind of got into each other's heads a little bit too much I think between the rounds we were razzing each other our teams were razzing each other and then we we went to stage and I think I uh double bulbed him and then he staged deep or something like that and I was all frazzled in the car and you know have all these voices in my head like you better not let chance beat you this that whatever and and I just, I was asleep on the light. I was hoping that he was going to red light, <laughs> but he didn't. So he took me out. And folks, you can see that all on the Funny Car Chaos YouTube channel with the full event recap of the 2022 championship finals from the Texas Motorplex, kicking off the stampede of speed. So you can see the uh, loss that Jay just described. Uh, now let's go beyond losses though uh, what are the hopes for 2023 great 2021 2022 was rough redemption season i'm sure is on the radar i think my biggest goal for this year is just consistency with the car and if it'll go a to b I'll be happy. If I get outran, I'll be happy. I would love to be back up in the points where I was that first year. You know, top three, that couldn't have asked for a better season. If we could get back in even the top five this year, this upcoming season, I would be ecstatic. I just want the car to go A to B every time, not have to sit on the starting line while somebody else goes or get pushed off the track or not have my nitrous turned on and leave and then you know, not go anywhere, really. I just, I don't want any of the issues that we had. I hope all the gremlins are gone and we can just make some good passes. I don't even care if I get outrun. As long as I get down the track, 
I will be happy. I I think I think that Jade Cook Racing is going to be doing more than just getting down the track this year in a positive way, not a negative way. I think that redemption season, y'all are going to have it very uh, interesting combination for funny cars. I don't think there's another funny car out there that has a centripetal supercharger. Obviously, we've got like Daniel Butheris commenting, and you got Scott out there. They are doing the turbo uh, combination. Except Daniel, you know, we got to talk to you. You've, you're doing something different. I don't fully understand. Oh. I've heard like Chevrolet Hemi and stuff like that. We got to we got to talk to you and figure what's out, figure out what's going on. But uh, interesting that you're kind of leading the charge as the only with the nitrous, and you'll be leading the charge with the not pro charger, but centri centripetal specialties, centripetal supercharger. Yes. Uh oh. I lost a little bit of the last part, oh, but okay. <laughs> you you'll be leading the way, is what I was what I was saying. With oh, the, I hope so. I yeah. hope I'm up there with Kirk and them, you know, fighting them for points and just taking names this season and putting some numbers on the board that y'all wouldn't expect. I, I mean, look, 416, you said that was something that was lower, much lower than the personal best. So, and that was just testing. So once you really stretch the legs out, uh, no telling where you might get with that combination. And with mentioning that, like I said, a 416 would have put you like high C field, low B field, even for the finals. Where do you think in chaos racing, the way Chris has got it structured, where do you think the best spot is? Do you think it's in fact running A field numbers and qualifying number two and three and four, or is being a B field operator, if you will, more advantageous to qualifying such a way? Well, I guess it just kind of depends on the car you have and the times that you can run consistently. For us, I don't think that competing with um, Kirk Williams and, you know, those, you know, deep in the threes numbers is going to be possible. But, you know, so if we do end up in a we're, you know, probably going to be lower in A, which that pairs you with a really fast car. So I think that just being middle to top of any of the fields, just the way that Chris has it worked out is just so brilliant because you're not, you know, the gaps are smaller because you're not running one versus 16. You're running one versus eight and nine versus 16. And it just makes it so much easier to compete and make it makes the it, it levels the playing fields and i think that really where no matter where you are you're not going to be so far off from whoever you're racing that it's a given who's going to win i think that it makes it a very competitive series by shrinking those gaps and so really there's nowhere terrible to be for us as a car like if we do end up in a then that's awesome we ran a field but you know it also means that we have to run somebody that's probably a lot faster than us <laughs> well you never know you just might get there eventually and be just as fast as some of those uh deep in uh, the threes yeah deep in the threes Operating that quickly, what, thoughts on that? Do, is that somewhere you want to get to eventually? There's so much. It goes into every pass. And I have worked my way up from, I remember the first time I ran in the fours. I remember for years I ran mid fives, low fives, low fives. And then I ran like a 490 something. And I just... It was the craziest thing ever. I felt like I just, I don't know, ran a rocket down the track. It was so fast to me. And now whenever I run like a mid four, I'm like, are we going to get there? Like, are we going to get there today or tomorrow? So I think that like it all comes with comfort in your car and in 
yourself and your reflexes and just you know a good track helps you don't want a lot of bumps if you're going to be going that fast because they'll send you into a frenzy and so just i don't think that low threes are out of the question for me i just don't think that i need that anytime soon i like where i am now and i think that low threes could come one day but i need more time where i am you know Okay, I like it. Well, we'll let you get the new combination worked out, you know, and and run with it, and, and then y'all can stretch the legs, and it'd be fascinating to see what that setup uh, would be able to do because I really feel like in Funny Car Chaos, there has, like, I'm surprised nobody hasn't attempted a all-motor, mountain-motor-like combination. You are talking about, like, 826 cubic inches and seeing – how that would compete in Funny Car Chaos. No one has done nitrous with like the 900 plus cubic inch types com combinations that you would find in, uh, you know, Pro Mod today. So uh, there's still room out there in Funny Car Chaos for someone to come out with something that's different that probably hasn't been under a funny car and see how it'd be able to throw down. So I like what y'all are doing. I like it too. It's fun. Very cool. Well, Jade, look, it's been fun to talk with you tonight. I'm going to give you the floor. Just say thank you to whoever you need to say thank you to and tell the competitors what to expect from Jade Cook Racing and Nemesis in 2023. Oh, I want to thank all of my crew, especially Dad and Mitch and Brandon and Ashley for coming with all the races and Kim and Chance for always being there. Um, this year is going to be great. It'll be great to get everybody back together. And I guess everybody can just expect me to be in the top three of points next season. I like it. I like it. Well, Jade, look, thank you for your time. Have yourself a good rest of your night. Thank you. You have a good night. Adios. All right, folks, that was Jade Cook, driver of the Nemesis Funny Car and Funny Car Chaos Competition. New combination, looking for new things in 2023 to get back somewhere and be that much more competitive and be competitive like they were in 2021. And I think, I think we're all expecting that to be the case in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, the Funny Car Chaos Classic is around the corner. The race that kicks off the season for Funny Car Chaos March 16th through the 18th at the Texas Motorplex. You see uh, Mr. Lyle Greenberg and the uh, Cone Hunter who won the A field last year right there. Who's going to win the A field, B, C, D fields at the Classic? We don't know yet, but there are new people going to be there. There are people that haven't even announced that they're going to be there. They're going to be there. And I've heard the entry list is shaping up like 30 plus already. It's going to be a great time as it always has been. Maybe even the best one yet. Because this is the Funny Car Classic to be at. There are others, but this is the one down there in Ennis, Texas at the Texas Motorplex. To each and every one of you that tuned in, thank you for watching Between the Slicks. Hit the like button for me and hit the share button as well. Come back and join us Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Monday Morning Racer or the Competition Plus Facebook page or the Drag Racing Connection Facebook page for Between the Slicks. We'll let you know who we got for next week when I know, because I don't know right now. But we will definitely be talking drag racing along with you. God bless and keep the pedal to the metal. Hero Soap Company is a veteran-owned establishment that produces all-natural essential oils infused soap that is sold with a portion of the proceeds supporting other veteran groups. Hero Soap Company. Heroes supporting heroes. Be a hero yourself and buy a bar and let freedom clean. 